Thank you for joining us for the 2022 proposed BTK Gypsy Moth Treatment. My name is Danielle DeVito. I'm the Pest Mitigation and Regulatory Coordinator with the Minnesota Department of Agriculture. Some of the topics we will discuss today are the gypsy moth background, the distribution, the management, and the treatment proposal for New Duluth and Cloquet areas. Before we begin, I would like to mention that the Minnesota Department of Agriculture recognizes that the Entomological Society of America has discontinued the use of gypsy moth as a common name for Lamantria dispar. For the time being, a new common name has not been determined. For the purpose of this presentation, we will continue to use the name gypsy moth until a new common name has been decided upon. Now we will discuss some background information on the gypsy moth. The picture shown here is an image of the male and female gypsy moth. The male is on the left in brown and the female on the right in white. The scientific name for the gypsy moth is Lamantria dispar. This is a pest of concern because of the heavy tree defoliation the pest can cause. Each caterpillar can consume a cubic square foot of leaves in its short lifespan. Here is a picture of an area that has suffered heavy defoliation from an infestation of gypsy moth. The gypsy moth will feed on up to 300 species of trees and shrubs. This image looks like it should be taken in the spring during fresh leaf out. However, this picture was taken during an infestation where heavy feeding has occurred, causing the high defoliation level. Here is an aerial image where widespread defoliation has occurred. If you look in some of these areas, there is a gray, light brown appearing trees. Some of these areas have fresh, bright green up in here. However, when you look at this, the defoliation on these trees and the loss of leaves from gypsy moth occurred during a high outbreak, causing the heavy defoliation of concern in this area. Gypsy moth can multiply by the thousands. In the image, the tan, light brown color in the center is an egg mass. Each egg mass can have approximately 500 to 1,000 eggs. This egg mass is recently begin hatching out as thousands of caterpillars emerge to spread and feed. While the gypsy moth is spreading and feeding, there can be human impacts. Some of the health concerns on the left picture are leaves that have been eaten by the gypsy moth along with the frass waste dropped on possibly a deck. Your property values can be impacted from defoliated trees. They could be a nuisance if you look at the garden figure, all of the moth caterpillars on there, as well as causing quarantines to areas with known infestations and established populations of gypsy moth. Next, let's talk about the distribution of gypsy moth. Here is an image of where the gypsy moth quarantine currently is. The gypsy moth was brought into the United States in the late 1800s by a scientist looking to breed silk moths. This moth escaped the area and has slowly been spreading across the country for the last 150 years. The dark blue is areas currently quarantined for gypsy moth. The light green on that leading edge is areas of an action area with slow the spread where we actively control and eradicate gypsy moth populations from continuing. One way the gypsy moth can naturally disperse is through its silk thread. If you look at this image, there are multiple caterpillars with on the silk lines here. These caterpillars hatch out, can climb to the top of trees to begin feeding, and put out this silk web and be carried on the wind further into new trees and new food for their growth. Other ways that the gypsy moth continues to spread is by humans. Firewood is a common way for pests to travel. Household moves, the image in the middle has an egg ma mass on the bottom of a chair. Nursery stock originating from quarantined areas could also be a possible way to spread gypsy moth. More ways humans add in the movement of gypsy moth is our heavy tourism, industry such as logging, and the movement of outdoor equipment. The example here shows a lawnmower with two egg masses on it. And further, more human-assisted dispersal ways is holiday greenery being moved, 
the industry here an example of our rail carts and visitors from quarantined areas unknowingly bringing gypsy moth to areas without. Now let's discuss the management ways to control gypsy moth. The Slow the Spread program is a cooperation between federal, state, and local government agencies to help control gypsy moth spread across North America. On the left-hand side, the gypsy moth's predicted spread without the program is approximately 15 miles each year. On the right-hand side is the spread of gypsy moth with this program. As you can see from those colored lines, the spread is significantly reduced with the assistance of this program. Here is an image showing pictures of gypsy moth traps. Minnesota uses an early detection survey to determine where gypsy moth populations could possibly be. The trap on the left is a small, roughly seven inches long brown triangle deployed in a grid-like across the eastern half of Minnesota. These traps are, use a female-based pheromone lure attracting the male moths. This allows the Minnesota Department of Agriculture to determine if gypsy moth are in areas previously unknown. Here are the results from the 2021 survey. On the left-hand side, you see the state of Minnesota. All of the light gray area is where our traps were placed in the past year. Minnesota sets roughly 22,000 traps last year. As you see also, there's different colors. The green is positive with a single moth catch, and as the numbers get brighter, there are more moths caught. Last year, approximately 12,000 moths were caught. On the right-hand side, we're zoomed into this area where we are proposing treatments for 2022. If you look out of the 12,000 moths caught in 2021, 7,000 of those were caught in Lake County alone. As you see areas with a brighter color, more moths were captured in those areas, allowing the Department of Ag to identify where outbreak areas are occurring. Here are two more images depicting where gypsy moth populations are occurring. If you look at these, think of radar that you might be tracking for a thunderstorm. The heavier, the brighter, the higher, the gypsy moth population is as it slowly is moving across the country. You can see places in 2021 where treatments occurred to slow the spread and or eradicate gypsy moth on this leading edge. Here is a map with the 2022 proposed treatments for gypsy moth. The Minnesota Department of Agriculture is proposing four treatment blocks. Outlined in blue, you will see two blocks are two harbors northeast and upland trail. Those are proposed as a mating disruption. For the sake of this presentation, we will continue to discuss the two proposed BTK blocks in Cloquet and New Duluth. If you would like to know where you live in proximity to each of these treatment blocks, you can go and use our interactive map. If you go to our website, you can click into our map and enter in your address and it'll pull up how far away and where you are located in reference to these treatment blocks. The image below shows the proposed treatment area for Cloquet. On this site, you can click on these proposed blocks. It will give you the approximate acreage as well as what the treatment is being proposed and when these treatments can be expected to occur. You can also sign up for text and email alerts from each of these blocks within this map. Here again, we show the zoomed in proposed area to be treated in the cloquet block at 496 acres. To give you a point of reference, here is the proposed area for New Duluth. This is zoomed out so you can see where this block is, as once I zoomed in, it is hard to be able to identify exactly where we will be discussing. Now, here's the zoomed in area of New Duluth at approximately 75 acres. Now we will discuss the proposed eradication plan for these two areas. The Minnesota Department of Agriculture contracts aerial applicators to apply biological insecticide. This treatment is done over two applications at each site. 
The applications occur approximately five to 14 days apart, weather permitting and dependent on the insect development. Applications typically begin early in the morning at sunrise. This is expected to occur in June. The product proposed is Bacillus thuringiensis variety Karstaki, commonly called BTK. This is a biological insecticide. It is an organic, a naturally occurring bacteria. This only affects caterpillars that feed on the foliage with this BTK on it. It is not harmful to humans, pets, birds, and or bees. BTK, however, doesn't last long. This product is used because approximately 50% of it breaks down in less than four hours due to UV light. It is effective for approximately seven days. The product has been used for 45 years and is widely used among organic gardeners as this is organic certified. Here is all of the ways that we work to inform the public of these proposed projects. This informational meeting, for one, you, if you lived inside one of these treatment blocks, you would have received an informational postcard mailed to all residents within each of these proposed areas. This informational postcard would have shared with you the public meeting that you are sitting on now. We also mail out pre-spray postcards approximately 10 days prior to the project occurring to inform everyone that this will be happening. Legal notices are placed in the papers. We work with the local emergency management teams to inform them of the project occurring, as well as with the news and work for media blitzes. As I mentioned before on our map, we have email and text notification system from our webpage and our online interactive map. You can sign up to receive email or text notifications prior to our project beginning, the day of, and when these projects are completed. We also offer a report a pest hotline where you can call and get more information about these treatments. When these treatments are going to occur, there are a few other notifications we use. We work with the media to share the message. Again, our email and text notification system to allow you to get direct text that these projects are going to be occurring. While these treatments are occurring also, we staff our report a pest hotline so you can get an immediate contact with a person. To conduct these treatments, an environmental assessment is completed with cooperation with the Forest Service. This EA is completed to determine that treatments are appropriate and the best method to be used. If you would like more information or to comment on the environmental assessment, you may do so at the website listed here. Comments must be made in writing by March 15th. Thank you for logging in to see the proposed treatments for the 2022 season. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to me at my email address or phone number listed here.